Here you go. Thank you. Like we said at the beginning of the show, in this segment we're going to be training some dogs on how to recognize rattlesnakes and stay away from them. Now we had a guy come out of Pierre, South Dakota, the state capital, which everybody pronounces Pierre, but it's Pierre. It was Jerry and Margaret Pierre. And he raises his own dogs, trains his own dogs, and he also trains on how to recognize rattlesnakes and stay away from them. So in August of 2013, we got together and we trained about 20 dogs. Now it was a pretty warm day on this Saturday in August of 2013. It had to be 85, 90 degrees. And so he brought two snakes along so he could kind of spell one of them with the other one so they wouldn't overheat. Rattlesnakes can't handle a lot of hot weather. They're looking for cool. And what we're going to do first here is we're going to introduce one of the cast of characters, one of the rattlesnakes. He had two. Yeah, that's a rattler, all right, isn't it? That is a dandy. Okay, I want you to come up. You see the. Oh, yeah. Margaret, come here a minute. Hang on to the button. That is a dandy. Okay, and you can see sodium. Okay. On this side. I'm all pinched up. Yeah, so he can still get his tongue out. He's hot and ready to go. Yeah. Well, here we go, folks. Now that we've introduced the cast of characters, we're going to go on with the segment. Basically, the process is going to be we'll do one dog at a time. I want the owner sort of available. I want the dog to be able to run to the owner or whoever, you know, brought him. Once I've done this, what we'll do is we'll have a snake out here someplace, probably off over there in the short grass. Uh, Margaret will sort of try to keep track of that snake, but it doesn't, you know, escape us. And uh, I'll lock, we're getting a wind. I was worried about that. I'll take it downwind and let that dog smell it, hear it, and see it. Usually what happens, my experience has been with dogs, is they're going to get bit for two reasons. Curiosity, which is, a, is the main one, and then you get certain kinds of dogs that are just aggressive. They're going to try to go in there and, and it's something foreign and try to get to it. Either way, I'm going to solve that problem. And what I'll do is when they come around, I would like them to sort of catch that scent, that scent cone, and, and work themselves into it. When they get right to it, I'm going to have the shock collar with me. I'm going to shock them. I'm going to shock them with their charge, and I'm going to do it as hard. It's going to be as violent a charge as, as mine will make, and they're good ones. I want to be able to sort of let them go. I'll have them on the line. I want to let that dog go and let him get back to safety and to his owner and, you can, and all you do is comfort him. What will happen, you know, this and that. You're just a, a, the good guy. Put him away. Praise him or? Praise him, do whatever, hug him, pick him up, do whatever you want to do. Can't pick him up no more. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but you should just be that big safety thing. If you, I don't want you to, that dog to associate you with any of that that's going on out there. We're going to put him up. Uh, is, you know, we're going to bring them out in 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, whatever, again, we're going to run them again. Now, that dog knows what happened to them, or her, and they don't want to be going back there. So what we'll do the second time is we do a lead, two leads, two long lines, and we struggling, and, it's, you know, it's kind of a mess. Because they don't want to be there, I'll walk them over that snake again. And on top of that snake, I'm going to shock them again, let them go. Again, you guys will, will, you know, pick up your, this board, you know, whatever happened to him and <laughs> soothe him and calm him or her and, and whatever. That Just so everybody knows, the snakes were devenomized and the dog collar was a shock collar with a loop on it for the lanyard to hook into. There was no choking of the dogs. Who's first? Uh, Kevin, who's first? Kevin. Kevin, you want to bring that big, big, white dog? You can make it hard for me right away. Big strong dog. The biggest dog in the past. Right. If you guys watching this thought this was easy as a dog owner to go ahead and put your dog through something like this, then you got another thing coming. Because I mean to tell you, it just tore my heart out to put my dog through this thing. And every other one of the guys said the same thing. But it's necessary. Now you see these two dogs right here have both been into rattlesnakes before. The second one was trained. This yellow lab, you see how he walks in between Jerry and the snake. Good dog. Well, my question would be, how do you get the fangs out? How do you do this? Well, very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course. Unbeknownst to us, 
There was a lady out in the houses out back out here that had talked to the sheriff's department and complained about cruelty to animals for our training. So they sent a deputy out and he seemed to be the one that was probably the best one they could have sent because he owned a couple of rattlesnakes himself and once we explained we were training dogs, he was totally on board with it. Push that all the way up, totally expose that, that fang and snip it off. And then we sew their mouth shut. Is there any damage? Well, snakes have seven sets of fangs. Mm -hmm. and so, I'm talking about the stitching is what I'm talking No, about. you got to be careful, you know, you don't want to get into the nose or, or the eye. So how'd you get into this? Well, I've got six dogs yeah. of my own, and her, I've always had about that many, and I do a little bit of guiding, and, and I guide where there's danger. Yeah, after this little session here that we had with the deputy sheriff, the five of us that were left got together and discussed uh, the whole day, and then shook hands and went our way. The process isn't just for training the dog and keeping the dog safe during hunting. I was walking our dog and one of our dogs has been trained, walking in the woods and all of a sudden my dog Max just stopped, he jumped up, he came back to me, pushed on me and, and would not let me go any further down the trail. Yeah, and right. I looked on down and there was a rattlesnake all coiled up. I highly recommend getting the shots too. Yes. Yes. It's a good. It's a. It's a combination that needs to happen because uh, accidents could still happen, yeah. mm -hmm. and so it, it always. It's a pretty cheap insurance. But what happens with a hunting dog too is that you know they're hunters and they're and they're <laughs> curious and they're bright and they want to know what you know, and so they go in there but they go in their face first. If they have time, they will go face first. It's not meant to be a good experience for the right. dog. It's meant to be aversive, a, aversive experience. You know. Thank you for coming out. It's been Thanks great. Thanks for having me.